Dr. Orlando Landrum, a Harvard and Cornell trained MD who specializes in interventional pain, regenerative medicine, and neuromodulation techniques. Okay. All right. So tell me a little bit about this knee pain and how long you had the problem for. Um, I have had the problem for, geez, I would say close to three years. It just progressively got worse. Um, how did it start? Just feeling a little twinge, a um, little discomfort. Um, at the same time, I found out I had Meniere's, which throws your balance off. Mm -hmm. So I kept saying it was because of the Meniere's. Okay. Um, and that I was, you know, my balance wasn't so good and I would fall a lot. So I just figured that that was part of why my knee was hurting, just that everything had shifted. Um, and that was part of what um, my um, uh, family doctor had said that, you know, you're just hurting because you're walking weird. Um, and then um, I went to uh, physical therapy, which was supposed to help with the Meniere's and anything else. And um, they noticed there that, you know, I was having a lot of knee pain, um, more so than, um, mm. you know, than I thought. Yeah. And, um, I kind of ignored it and kept dealing, trying to deal with my balance and everything. And it just got worse until it got to the point where it overcame like my um, imbalance and my dizziness. Because with veneers, you kind of get mm -hmm. dizzy. And um, instead of the, the veneer stopping me from like moving around, because that's um, when we still had our, our grocery store. And so I would be stocking shelves and doing that kind of stuff, and I'd move a lot, and it, I'd get kind of woozy and dizzy and have to stop. Well, instead of that stopping me, it was my knee pain that was stopping me before that, which, you know, we're talking like a couple of minutes and I'm in pain. And I got to the point where just um, doing very little, like what the two minutes it takes you to make a pot of coffee, you know, make your coffee, I was in too much pain. Really? Yeah. So I would have to like sit down. How long did it take for the knee pain to evolve to that? Um, you know, I would say, um, cause it, well, in October, Meniere's will be four years and mm -hmm. that's dirt. I mean, it kind of was simultaneous with that. Right. Um, so I would say close to four years, three years, whatever you want to, I mean, because I've been getting, you know, treatments for a while. Actually, so it's been like a year. So let's talk about those treatments without you mentioning names of different people and all those type of things. Mm -hmm. What were some of the things that you had done before you came to our office? Oh, I went to um, uh, an orthopedic surgeon mm -hmm. um, or an orthopedist or whatever. Did you pick that and orthopedic doctor out, out the blue or how did you no, get to them? No, my doctor referred, my uh, GP uh, referred me. Okay. And... Um, uh, that was an unpleasant situation. Why? Um, you can be real. <laughs> well, <laughs> what um, happened? Okay, so well, we took an X-ray, and he said that the it's the left knee that I have the most pain on. That it was uh, bone on bone. He said it was what? Bone on bone. Okay. And um, that um, I would need a knee replacement, but that would be impossible um, because. Um, <clears throat> I'm a little on the plump side, and that I needed gastric bypass surgery before he would do a knee replacement, and um, I wasn't really comfortable um, with that, and I said, well, I would just, I just want to be able to move more, because then, um, you know, it might be possible to lose some weight <laughs> if I could move some more, so um, we did... Um, uh, cortisone, cortisone shots, and um, the first one that I, it didn't do anything. I mean, I had no no relief whatsoever. Um, so let's back up for a quick second. I want okay. to ask you a question. Okay. And I don't want you to play for the camera. I want you to talk to me like you regularly talk to me. Hold on the curse words though. All yes. Right? Yes. So <laughs> this is what I'd ask of you: is the following. When that doc talked to you and told you what your options were before the cortisone. How did that how did that resonate with you? Um well I didn't I didn't want to go back. 
Um, and it made me, um, well, it, it made me angry. I, I, I mean, I know I'm overweight, you know, and I have been for a long time, not to this extent, because I used to be able to move a lot more. Um, but I wanted, um, I wanted help. Yeah. And I didn't feel like I got help. I, I got, um, Judged. Lectured, reprimanded, I don't know, just um, not, uh, it just did not feel feel good about it. And the the cortisone shot idea was after being reprimanded. Mm, okay. And that was the only option I was given. Um, and, but yeah, I didn't want to go back. I mean, I, I made it pretty clear to my GP that I was really unhappy with that experience but I did go back okay and had a second shot the second shot was it any better than the first no okay um so did no. you do a third shot no I did not do a third shot because after the second shot um you know like many people I google mm -hmm. and sometimes it's good and sometimes it's bad because you don't always know what you're reading um but I could not help myself, so I started Googling, and at one point, um, Pete, my better half, had said that um, uh, the cortisone shots, um, I don't know, like deteriorate stuff. If you get, as you get more and more so, it's actually not, in the long run, not helping, but making it worse. Well, I didn't realize that. Um, and so I started reading to check his facts. And, um, well, uh -huh. you know, it's important. And, um, and I found out that that was very true. And then I kept reading more and found that there were some alternatives um, uh, that might help uh, relieve my pain. So what caught your eye initially as one of the alternatives? Well, the first thing was um, like stem cell research at some point needs um will need some help because all my weight is going on my right leg um so we started with was you flex the first one or the second one okay so we started with um you flex the shots and that is when i learned that um that you can pinpoint where you're putting the needle um with like is it an ultrasound thing? The ultrasound mm -hmm. thing. Um, and that is nothing that the orthopedic surgeon did with the cortisone shots. They just, you know, shot my knee up. Um, so, I mean, it might have helped if maybe it didn't go in the right spot where I really needed it. I, I don't know. I mean, obviously, I don't know. But I was really impressed that... Um, you actually like cared where it was going and wanted it to go in the right place and knew where that was because of having an MRI. Um, and um, so we did, did we do two or three Euflexes? Three. Um, and that was e easy. I mean, it was, you know, um, outpatient, a couple of minutes. Um, uh, it wasn't in the office, it was in the hospital, but um, it was easy. Uh, but it didn't help. Mm -hmm. um, I think maybe the first or second one I had like a I don't know is it a couple of days a couple of days relief or something but it it didn't it didn't cut it. Um, so then what? What was the second one? You don't remember. I don't remember. It was another shot, but what was it called? It was when we did the test for the geniculate radio frequency. And what's the easy word for that? <laughs> it was a test where we go after the nerves to the knee. Oh, that's right. Oh, and you um, like blast those or mm -hmm. whatever. I don't know. It's not really an ablation, though. It is. It, it's hot or cold? It's cold. Hot. hot. Okay, whatever. Um, so, yeah. So, we did that. Um, and that didn't work. All right. And did I do that twice? You did the test twice and then... Oh, that's right. And mm -hmm. then the actual thing. And I think the test... I don't know. I think I might have got a day or two of relief on a test, on the, like the first test and the second test, no, and then when, or not much, and then when we did it, 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 
I was too far gone. I needed something else. Um, and that is when we talked about PRP. But by then, you were probably still thinking that orthopedic doctor maybe had some something that was right, didn't you? You thought they were Well, right. I thought I was going to have to get a knee replacement, but I was going to have to call around and um, find a surgeon that would operate on, um, you know, the uh, <clears throat> obese. And I know that you can find one if you are, if you just ask, because... You can't, I mean. So what you stopped can't. you from Googling for the, another orthopod? Because I didn't want surgery. Why? Because I didn't want my knee amputated out of my leg mm -hmm. and have whatever they are, ceramic, metal, I'm not sure, I think there's several different um, combinations in there. When I found out that I still might not be able to easily go up steps I won't, in many cases, you can't bend down and put, like, pressure on it. So, like, gardening issues or that kind of stuff would be, could still be painful. And I read um, that you can still have pain, like, where the, um, the rods that they put into your um, bones to hold it in place, mm -hmm. that that area, you could still have a lot of pain. And um, I, uh, I'm not quite ready for that and um there's also that whole idea too about what age mm -hmm. i mean because I'm, I'm 55 and at one point you know they said that it was too it would be early to get a knee replacement and i'd probably need another one and since i would have so much weight on it it would deteriorate even faster um and i it you can be weird. honest. What were you going to say? Well, you no, what? I just, I just, I didn't like, I don't like, I, I mean, I know I'm overweight. I, you, you know, I don't need to hear about it. And I don't, I needed help to move around, you know, because I mean, I, you know, I couldn't walk through my house. I can't, couldn't clean my house. Um, I was always in pain. I was always angry. Um, and that's that's just no quality of life went down to well it could have gotten lower I suppose but it was the lowest I've ever experienced and I did not like it okay so at all we decided to go for this PRP mm -hmm. but of course we had to talk first so yes. what were the things that gave you some degree of understanding and convinced you to consider doing it um well, I hope that it would work, um, and it makes sense. I mean, because you're, like, you know, using your your own blood, and um, I don't know what's it. What when it's when the centrifuge thing? What's that come down to? What's that called? The amber stuff. I could tell you all that, but we don't need to be okay. fancy. Okay, all right. Well, we're but, just talking but, to but regular I mean, people. Okay, but so. <laughs> It was my own. It was my own body healing my own body, mm -hmm. and that's pretty amazing because our bodies are supposed to be able to do that or can do that if given the opportunity, um, and that's amazing to me. And when, and even though insurance doesn't cover it, you know, a knee replacement. I think it's upwards of like $70,000. And yes, my insurance would have covered that. But, you know, my PRP was 2500 3000 something like that. Um, and that's, <laughs> that's a, a lot, I mean, it's a lot less money. And it's my own body healing itself and that's that's pretty cool so how'd you tolerate the blood being taken from you <laughs> well um the first uh, <clears throat> you go the day before to get your um blood taken and um they uh they take 40 vials yes 40 vials and um when i went in the afternoon 
uh, they couldn't get any blood out of me. And I had been drinking water for like two days and trying to plump up. <laughs> anyway, so um, later that night, which was actually Halloween, um, I had to, we had to come back and you came in and took my blood and found that <clears throat> I was a difficult patient because we still had trouble, but once you got it, um, I easily gave up my 40 vials. And um, then the next day, um, I came back for um, the shots in my knee and um, it was painful. I will not lie. Um, what did I do? Six shots? Pretty Something close. like that. Five, six, eight. I don't know. After the first one, it didn't matter because that was um, the most painful. But it was a shot. It Versus was what? A, Huh? Versus what? Versus a saw cut in my leg, even though I, even though you know you're not conscious for it. Um, I don't have problems with shots. Give me a shot. I'd rather have a shot than a pill. Um, and um, I, I, I knew that you know, uh, I would know what was going on the whole time. You know, because I always tell you if you're overweight, you're probably you know the anesthetic isn't good and blah blah blah. But anyway. So, um, so I got my shots, um, and like I said, it hurt. I was, I was loud, um, but that's just part of it. And it was only for a few moments it hurt. Um, the next day, I iced it a couple of times. It, it wasn't really, you know, it, I wasn't really in pain. You know, it was a little sore, but I've been in so much pain anyway, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. um, um, I stood a couple times and um, it has been, um, well, that was the end of October and we are now um, in February and it has been real, it, it was slow for me. A lot of people within like eight weeks, six, eight weeks start feeling um, something. Were you anxious about that? Yo, yeah. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, I, I just figured it didn't work. And yep. um, I was um, actually trying to figure out then um, what would be the next step because I would want the the actual stem cell stuff, the next step up, but that is also not covered by insurance and that is um, more expensive um, than, than the PRP. And that would um, require something because at this point I haven't been able to work. Um, we gave up our business two years ago and I was barely working before that when all, when all this started happening. Um, and I don't, I don't think I'm ready to be around people being in pain um, at a real job. And all my jobs were like retail things mm -hmm. where you're standing and you're, you know, nice to people. And if you're in pain, it's hard. Sure. Um, because they can tell when, you know, you snap at them or you have to sit down. You know, it's like, sorry, I'm dizzy. I have to go sit down now. Uh, so, um, so I was, I was pretty frustrated and I was concerned that I would have to get on the phone and start finding, um, a surgeon that, that would do, you know, heavy people. And, um, uh, but then we gave it, um, an extra month. Oh, it was an extra month above that because we had the death in the family, so I missed my follow-up appointment. So it was another month that um, I came back and um, we decided we were gonna give it one more month. And it started um, feeling a, a little bit better. I mean, like I noticed I could do a little bit, um, a little bit more before it hurt so bad. Um, and when I mean a little bit, I'm talking minutes, mm -hmm. not, you know, because I, I want to be a hundred percent, and I realize that that may be a, um, you know, a fantasy that I have. Um, I mean, perhaps someday I will be a hundred percent, but that I can't judge. You know, going from like being able to stand for a minute or two and being in pain to hours. I mean, that that's a long that's a long way, and I have to pay attention to the the little increments. Because this isn't a quick fix. I mean, 
it's it's your body healing itself and that does take time that you reminded me on several occasions um gently reminded me on several occasions so um so it was that that um when it started feeling better i would say that was what january when i actually could say it it wasn't hurting as bad it took longer before it hurt okay. um you know so i was actually doing a little stuff around the house i was making it like you know halfway to the grocery store i wasn't um, doing every other thing i could to avoid having to walk which just doesn't help the whole thing because you need exercise you need to move around to feel better um and um then um came back for my next follow-up and decided to give it um, um, another month and see what was going on and that brings us to um, this appointment oh and the last appointment I remembered how bad my back used to hurt before my knee hurt so bad because my back started hurting which meant my knee was feeling good enough not to not to be the first thing that was painful mm -hmm. and that's so sad to say <laughs> but it's it's how I measure things now um, so, um, now I'm, I'm, yesterday I did 3,500 steps, um, which is really amazing for me. Um, how many had you done last time you did that before? Um, the last time I did that, well, I mean, there's been days where I, it was like 700. <laughs> I mean, I spend a lot of time sitting in front of the TV hurting or before, you know, like no desire to get up and do anything. Um, I would say on a good day in the past, 1,000, 1,200. Um, huh. And, you know, that's, you know, with trying to keep my phone in my pocket. But maybe one of these days I should get a, a Fitbit. And I know that's a long way away from 10,000, but I'm really proud of my, my 3,500. So with all this thing that you've been through, what mm -hmm. would you have done differently? First of all, I would have done something about it earlier. I mean, I, w I would not have um, waited because, you know, doctors are wonderful. I mean, I, I have been really blessed with great doctors, except the orthopedic surgeon, but that's beside the point. Because um, he could be a really good doctor, it just wasn't right for me. And it's important that you find someone that's right for you because there has to be some level of trust. Um, so, um, but I would have done it earlier because not just, you know, just because it's a doctor, they don't always know what's going on. And I had a lot of things going on with me at that point. Um, so it was really hard to figure out what was the most important and what was happening. Did you have any of your doctors talk to you about PRP or stem cell? No, I had to find that out myself by doing research. And then, um, when I called your office and then when we talked about it. But by then, I had tried to read up as much as possible. Once you got some of that information, did you talk to your docs about oh, it? Oh, immediately. Well, not the orthopedic surgeon because I didn't go back to him, but I immediately um, get, uh, told um, our family doctor what I was doing. And, what did they think? Um, the response, honestly, was, hmm, that's interesting. Keep me posted. And I also explain my experience with the orthopedic surgeon and I was like I, you know I would not recommend that you send any overweight people to this orthopedic surgeon because they're only going to get upset hmm. and and being told you know you can't get fixed when you know it, it was just it was it was just a it was it. and um so um, yeah, but I would have I would have done it earlier. I would have started um, my research earlier, but I, I wouldn't have known yeah. just to do that because I would have thought that it was all I thought before that was available was like cortisone shots, and then eventually a replacement. You know, I mean, my neighbors had two knee replacements and one hip replacement, and she's like five years older than I am. Hmm. I mean, she's all about having it, everything replaced, does it? And I just assume that's the track. And I don't want to do that. Understood. Um, and if I don't have to, I will. Okay. Try my hardest. All right.
Anything else that you guys would do differently? I don't know what. Probably been to come here first. Well, that's what I said. If I would have, yeah, yeah. If I would have realized it, I, I would have done that first, and I try to um, uh, tell anybody I know that is having um, pain that maybe they should, you know, talk to a pain pain specialist first. Because the one thing I learned is that, you know, if you're an orthopedic surgeon, that that part that says surgeon means that that's what they do. And they might not really discuss those other things because their thing is surgery. Um, but I think that um, it's really important to, to look at uh, your options. Um, and I'm happy with my option here. Okay. Thank you.